As cruising begins to finally start back up around the world, many are cheering with joy as they prepare to sail the seven seas once again and embark on an adventure of a lifetime, forgetting about all the craziness they've dealt with over the past year. But what's even more important is that hundreds of thousands of crew members will finally return to work after a full year of uncertainty. However, most of them won't be coming back to what they knew pre-pandemic. They will have to settle for a new normal. As someone that's worked for cruise lines such as Carnival and NCL, I can tell you that there's definitely pros and cons to working on board cruise ships, and it's definitely not for everyone. However, these new rules and regulations that the cruise lines have put out in order to resume operations is just a little bit extreme. It'll actually make you question if you even want to work on cruise ships or not. We're going to go over a couple of these rules and regulations in today's video. Oh yeah, and please keep in mind that everything that I say in today's video is not going to be the same across the board as a blanket order for every single cruise line. Each individual cruise line is its own company with its own set of rules and regulations. So for example, if there's a set of rules for Disney Cruise Line, it's not going to exactly be the same set of rules for Carnival Cruise Line. You get what I'm saying here? I gotta put it out there because topics like this can be a bit touchy, especially with everything going on right now. I've already seen in the Facebook groups for crew members, things have gotten a little bit, well, heated. So first up, let's talk about quarantining when you're going to work on board a cruise ship. Now, obviously this one is to somewhat be expected given the state of the world that we're living in. However, unlike normal circumstances, if you're going to work on a cruise ship, I've heard this from plenty of my friends that are now on board cruise ships, you have to do multiple quarantines, which could be easier said than done. If you're set to work on board a cruise ship, the cruise line will first recommend that you quarantine at least one or two weeks prior to actually getting flown out to the city in which your cruise ship is docked at because you'll have to take a PCR test. Once you get to that city that your ship is docked at, you will then have to quarantine in a hotel for another one or two weeks. Also along with that, you'll get a PCR test once again. And then finally, you'll have to get another PCR test in order to get on board the ship and then you'll have to do another one to two weeks of quarantining. Now obviously this isn't for the faint of heart and like I said, it sounds easy easier said than done, but either way, it's kind of what you got to do if you want to make the money. A good friend of mine recently went through this process in order to work on board the Disney Magic. He told me that all the quarantining was of course tough, but he was able to pass the time by doing a bunch of push-ups and just working out. He said by the time he was done, he had done so much working out that he felt like the Hulk, which I seriously doubt because he still couldn't beat me in a fight. I'll hit him with that two-piece and knock him out. Anyway, so next up, we got to talk about the face mask. Even though these mandates are starting to fade in some places like the United States, even on board cruise ships, I do believe this is going to be a requirement for crew members for some time. It's understandable because obviously the guests come first and they want to avoid a situation altogether and make the guests feel as comfortable as possible. So while working on board the cruise ship, the crew members must wear masks at all times, whether they are inside, outside, on the clock, or off the clock. Also, if you're a crew member that happens to be around large crowds, you must get a PCR test once a week. If you're around the crowd, maybe every now and then you have to get a PCR test once a month. Now for most of us the mask regulations and even the PCR test to some degree have gotten to be pretty standard and it's expected given the circumstances not to mention the fact that you're on board a cruise ship so there are going to be more health and safety protocols. However, you have to take into consideration that the crew members on board the ship are working up to potentially 10 to 12 hours a day. On top of that, some of them are going to be working outside. So imagine if, for example, we're in the Bahamas, it's 100 degrees outside, it's definitely going to be a challenge for the crew members. It's going to be rough, but it's nothing they can't handle. I mean, the crew members work hard. I think we all know that. However, on the bright side, though, let's say a crew member is working at guest services and he has an angry person I actually come over there and talk to him. If he's wearing a face mask and, for example, she isn't because we don't know how the rules are going to be for guests once the cruising actually officially starts back up. If she, let's say, spits out particles in his direction, just because he's wearing a face mask, he's not protected. So that's definitely a plus, isn't it? As disgusting as that sounds. But it's the truth. Next up, we gotta talk about no shore leave. So this is going to be a big one, probably the biggest point that I can make in today's video because this has everybody pretty divided from the guest and even amongst the crew members. So if you don't know what shore leave is, essentially it's when the crew member can get off in the ports of calls or even private islands. So as all of you know, over the past year, you have crew members that haven't been able to make any money. They've been sent home with a lot of uncertainty and they have been waiting very patiently to get back to working on board cruise ships. That way they can feed their families 
companies and start making money once again. However, though, on the flip side of that, as great as all that is, there are still crew members that are curious as far as what the conditions are going to be like on board, which is completely understandable because they're going to be there for up to half a year, even more for some cases. So here's the big debacle when it comes to shore leave. You have crew members fighting amongst themselves and they're divided when it comes to shore leave because on one hand, you have crew members that are saying nobody should be complaining because they're actually getting ready to go back to work and they're able to feed their families and make money. Good point. However, on the flip side of the coin, you have people that are saying that the conditions are extremely important. So like I said, I do agree with that. It makes a lot of sense because you're going to be on a ship for six to nine months, even longer in some cases. And on top of that, the cruise lines a lot of times do make that as a very big selling point to get crew members on board cruise ships. They tell them that they can travel the world and they can see all these amazing things. And a lot of crew members definitely hold on to that. But on top of that, more importantly over anything, I also believe this is about mental health. You see, when you're stuck on board a cruise ship for potentially months on end, you can develop something known as cabin fever. I'm sure most of us know what that is, but it can lead to unfortunately things like depression and even worse. We did witness this firsthand last year whenever the big cruise ship industry shutdown happened and you saw crew members that unfortunately were doing things that I don't want to really mention in today's video, but you get exactly what I'm talking about. So I do believe that crew members definitely need some type of freedom and at least some time in some cases to actually be able to get off the ship and actually breathe some real fresh air that's not actually on board the ship, even if they're out on the Lido deck or anywhere of that nature as well. Now some friends of mine did mention that depending on where they are, let's say for example Quantum of the Seas, as long as the numbers were low they were allowed to get off in some cases and even in the private islands. However, this isn't going to be across the board for every cruise line, so essentially you have most crew members that will be stuck on board cruise ships for the entirety of their contract, which is uh not good. Next up we have limited or no gym access. I'm going to be completely honest with you, this one kind of shocked me because it would make sense given the state of the world and this pandemic that we're in you should be able to exercise and eat fruit and take care of yourself but what do i know anyway guys basically you have cruise lines coming out and saying that the crew members cannot go to the gym in some cases now i do have a friend that's on board another cruise line he's told me he's been able to get access to the gym however they haven't really taken on any passengers as of yet so he's allowed to go to the guest gym he's allowed to go to the crew gym and it's been really good but whenever they actually resume operations they're saying that he will get no gym time whatsoever now there are some exceptions of course some cruise lines are allowing crew members to only go to the crew gym which is pretty standard even in a normal circumstance but either way guys I mean that one is just kind of weird to me because I don't know what I could do if I was on board I eat so much Oreo cheesecake when I'm working on board cruise ships I don't even know how I'm gonna burn it off I'd probably become the fattest man alive if I was actually on board cruise ships right now all right, now for all you Jack Sparrows out there, this one's going to hurt your soul a little bit. So for most cruise lines, there will be no crew bar available for the crew, which means no drinks. Now, at first glance, this doesn't sound like a problem at all. However, I'm going to break this down. That way you guys can understand exactly how it works on board the cruise ship. Now, of course, the drinks aren't really a factor to a certain extent. For some, it might be because you got to understand these crew members on board are working 10 to 12 hours every single day. And for a lot of them, the only time they actually get to relax and wind down and socialize without thinking about the struggles of work is at the crew bar and if you take that away again we got to circle back over to the mental stress a lot of crew members on board have friends in the same department and it's like they all get off at the same time so they can enjoy a drink they can have fun and if they can't do that Again, people are going to feel isolated. They're already away from their families and friends. Some of them are doing it because they have no other choice. So if they can't socialize with their friends, what is it going to mean for their mental health? Now, chances are when it comes to the crew bar, you may be able to buy a drink, but it's kind of going to be on a grab and go basis. Whenever we had a norovirus outbreak on my ship, when I worked for NCL, that's how it was. If you wanted a beer or some wine, you go to the crew bar between their opening hours, which they would change up every now and then. You go there, grab your drinks, and you got to take it back to your room and you can't take it anywhere else. If you're caught with it anywhere else and socializing and gathering in places, you were fired right on the spot. So again, this is going to be extremely stressful moving forward for the crew members. So in a nutshell, I do believe that the big takeaway here and something that people have to understand is that no matter what, we as humans are social and driven beings. Meaning that while working on board a cruise ship, you are going to wonder about your social life. You're going to want to know about the crew bar. You're going to want to know about shore leave. You're going to want to know about how you can take care of yourself at the gym. For somebody to ask these questions, it's extremely unrealistic understandable. Now rounding all of this off, if I was offered a contract, would I take it given these circumstances and conditions? 
absolutely not. No, 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 there's no way. But at the same time, I'm also extremely grateful to have opportunities outside of the cruise ship industry, meaning I can make money doing other things, and that's not my only option as far as being able to feed my family. So once again, I'm thankful. I'm not knocking on anybody that actually is taking these contracts, because at the end of the day, you gotta do what you gotta do, and we are definitely on hard times, even though I hope things get better sooner rather than later. But we'll see how all of it plays out, guys. Anyway, that's my video for today. Let me know how you feel about all of this. Of course, on your way out, please make sure you like the video subscribe if you haven't already because i have a ton of content coming up and we'll go from there guys i also have merch and if you want to take it a step further and support the channel please join the ship life crew we have a bunch of perks and bonuses that regular viewers do not get access to for as low as just five dollars a month thank you so much guys and i'll see you out and about take care